hello guys welcome to my video and in this video we are going to be discussing diphtheria and its management your presenter here ide henry and without wasting much of your time let us dive straight into answering the questions i have a question with me and the question reads as follows lukundo sempe a three-year-old baby has been admitted to a pediatric wing with complaints of cough which is barking in nature fever and hoarseness of voice a provisional diagnosis of diphtheria is suspected. A provisional diagnosis of diphtheria is suspected. Question A. Define diphtheria. Three marks. Question 2. A. The causative organisms responsible for causing diphtheria. Question B. 1. Explain the pathophysiology of diphtheria. Question B. 2. Mention the five types of diphtheria. Question C. Discuss the management of diphtheria under the following headings. Diagnosis. 10 marks. Treatment 15 marks and nursing care 30 marks. Then the last question reads, explain the immunization regime for diphtheria. Okay, let us dive straight into answering the question. Mention three causative organisms of diphtheria. We've got Corony bacterium diphtheriae. That's the causative organism. Then explain the pathophysiology of diphtheria. So firstly, to explain the pathophysiology, you need to start with explaining the normal physiology of the respiratory tract. For example, um, the respiratory tract is responsible for all respiratory requirements in which uh, air is breathed in through the mouth, it goes down the airway, and then it is diffused, and then uh, waste product gases such as carbon dioxide is diffused out of the airway all the way out through the mouth. And then you can explain. But in diphtheria, the causative organism enters the respiratory system through inhaled air containing droplets with the bacteria which settles in the upper respiratory tract to produce toxins, exotoxins to be specific. Then, the exotoxins are absorbed causing tissue necrosis and inflammatory response such as fever and inflammation of the pharynx, larynx and nose causing cough with a barking sound. Then. The toxins spread through the bloodstream and in the heart it causes myocarditis, in the kidneys it causes acute tubular necrosis and when it affects the nervous system it causes demyelination. That is a short summary of the pathophysiology. Mention five types of diphtheria. We've got tontular pharyngeal diphtheria, we're mentioning, we've not been asked to explain. We've got anterior nasal diphtheria, tonsillar diphtheria, laryngeal diphtheria, and lastly, cutaneous diphtheria, also known as skin diphtheria. Then we have discussed the management of diphtheria under the following headings. Diagnosis, nursing care, as well as, um, pardon, diagnosis, treatment, as well as nursing care. Let's begin. So diagnosis. If we look at our question very well, I would like to take us back to the question. If we look at our question very well, it says, um, yeah, the question says, this baby has been admitted with complaints of cough, which is barking in nature, fever, hoarseness of voice, as well as a provisional diagnosis of diphtheria is suspected. The diagnosis is not yet made, but it is suspected. And that being the case, diphtheria is an emergency in its nature because it has got um, airway airway edema and airway edema can cause obstruction of the airway. This is a three-year-old child we're talking about. And to define diphtheria, diphtheria can be defined as an acute infectious condition caused by corony bacteria and is characterized by hoarseness of voice, fever, barking cough and the pseudo grayish membrane. Now that pseudo grayish membrane that develops on the tonsils can enlarge and can cause obstruction. So this is an emergency condition but the question says a provisional diagnosis of diphtheria is suspected, not yet confirmed either ways. So now, if you're confused as to whether or not you're going to resuscitate in this question or not, to save yourself in case resuscita uh, resuscitation is needed, in your management, you can mention the following things. So, you can before you start diagnosing, you can write a closed statement saying, if the patient presents with signs of airway obstruction, I will resuscitate in the following way. Then you talk about A, B, C, D. You check the airway for patency. You intubate if the airway is inflamed. You give corticosteroids under the, 
under drugs you can also talk about breathing you give something to soothe the throat to facilitate breathing and oxygen then you resuscitated this child but in this case we're not resuscitating because the stem has not outlined any life-threatening signs and symptoms so after you give that if statement then you can get back to diagnosis so management our aims to identify the causative organism secondly to identify the specific type of diphtheria then we can go to our uh, medical management which is the resuscitation part i was talking about so primary assessment and resuscitation i will assess if use an if statement airway breathing circulation and drugs so with our airway you can use an if statement i will assess the patient's airway to ensure it's clear of any obstruction such as secretions or laryngeal edema that could interfere with breathing which in this case there is because this is diphtheria so i will perform a tracheostomy to facilitate airway patency you can write that then breathing I will assess the patient's breathing pattern to determine if it is adequate or if there are signs of respiratory distress, of which in this case there is cyanosis. And I will administer humidified oxygen through the tracheostomy at 3 liters per minute. With that being said, you can also conclude with circulation. I will assess the pulse rate to determine if there is any presence of tachycardia or bradycardia. And then I will establish an IV line using a sterile cannula for fluid administration and emergency drugs. Then lastly, I will administer Ringer's lactate for adequate circulation. That being said, then you can talk about drugs. This patient has got a back in cough and children usually are restless. So we can give them a drug. And the drug we're given in this case is firstly we're going to assess the sugar levels to note if there's presence of hypoglycemia. Then, if there is, you can give, if you find that the RBS is less than 3.0, I will administer 10 mils of 50% dextrose to correct hypoglycemia. That being the case, ladies and gentlemen, we have resuscitated our patient. Then we can go straight into diagnosing now. So our diagnosis. We're going to start with history taking. So you can write the following. So I will take history and history will review having been exposed uh, through public gatherings or living in an area which is overcrowded. Then history will also review episodes, recent episodes of cops with a barking sound. Then under physical examination, on inspection, the patient presents with irritability and restless, uh, restlessness. Then on auscultation, the patient presents with irregular heart rhythm indicative of cardiac involvement. Remember, in our pathophysiology, we mentioned that in the heart it causes um, myocarditis and this impairs the heart's contractility. So now that can cause irregular heart rhythms. Then we go to lab investigations. So you write them exactly the way I have outlined them. You start with history taking. History taken, you write that, you write your next heading, physical examination, then you write on inspection, on auscultation, and what it will review. Then you write another heading, which is lab investigation. So here, a throat swab. So a throat swab is going to be taken for microscopic culture and sensitivity, and this will review the causative organism. Then, blood for full blood count, and this will review elevated white blood cells, indicative of presence of infection, which is fever. And then... Radiological examination, so you can talk about laryngoscopy. So laryngoscopy is going to review those pseudo grayish membranes which are present. Yes. And then we can now talk about the treatment. So treatment, you need to outline the drugs. You mentioned the name. So now if they have told you medical management and the uh, medical management and you've been given 15 marks only, you're not supposed to start explaining the nursing implications. Uh, you start mentioning the, the adverse reactions or side effects. The best thing you can do is just mention the drug, the dose, the route, and frequency. So, benzyl penicillin, 25 milligrams per kg body weight, intravenously for five days, twice daily. Then you can talk about steroids. You mention hydrocortisone. So, hydrocortisone, two, uh, 25 milligrams per kg body weight, intravenously to relieve inflammation. Then analgesia. This patient has fever, so paracetamol suspension can be given. Uh, five meals, that is. Uh, three times daily for three days to relieve pain and fever. That being the case, ladies and gentlemen, we can now talk about temporal tracheostomy because this is also part of the treatment. So this can be performed for temporary relief to facilitate effective breathing in laryngeal diphtheria. Then you can give an antitoxin because the diphtheria, the Corynebacterium diphtheria, produces exotoxins. So you also need to treat those. You give an antitoxin. That is 15,000 to 40,000 international units daily for five days to neutralize circulating diphtheria toxins. That being the case, we can now go to our nursing care. That's where we find our aprofenemi. aprofenemi. So the aprofenemi has got the following aims, environment, position, maintenance of uh, airway patency, 
in our management because this one, in this one the airway is affected. Then you can talk about rest, observation, psychological care, hygiene, elimination, nutrition, exercises, medication, infection prevention, and IEC. Let's start with our aims. So aims, the first one, we already had that. It was to isolate the causative organism and to treat. Our second aim was to relieve symptoms and prevent complications. So in our environment, you talk about the what? This patient will be nest in a pediatric unit. So I will nest the patient in a pediatric unit, the area of admission. So I will nest this patient in isolation, but near the nurse's bed because the condition is very infectious. Then the equipment around the patient's bed, you can talk of a drip stand, you can talk of a ventilator, talk of a bedpan being there, talk of a, an oxygen cylinder, you talk of a suctioning machine and so forth. Then you can talk about cleanliness. I will nest the patient in a clean and well-lit environment. The environment will be well ventilated. So that being the case, you go to positioning. I will nest the patient in a uh, pos position of preferred comfort. We're dealing with a pediatric uh, patient here. And there's no specific position you can nest a child because children easily move. So then any position of preferred comfort. Then I will allow to early turning to prevent uh, pressure sore formation. Then I will nest the patient in a railed bed to prevent injuries such as falls. Then having talked about that, we go to maintenance of airway patency. So here you can mention the following. If in case of airway occlusion, I will nest the patient on tracheostomy. That's number one. Number two, I will liquefy secretions and suction them using a working suctioning machine. That's nice. I will humidify the room by boiling keto to liquefy secretions and promote airway patency. And then lastly, I will administer a soothing drink to relieve the throat uh, to relieve throat irritation. This can be boiled ginger because that can provide some relief. Then next you can say rest. I will provide a quiet and calming environment to facilitate rest. Children easily get affected and disturbed when there's noise in the room. I will offer pain relief and assistance with any discomfort that may disrupt rest. Thirdly, I will establish a routine for rest periods and minimize disturbances. Fourthly, I will educate the patient's mother on the importance of rest for the child. That being the case, we go to observations. Yes, so under observations, you can uh, make mention of the following things. I will regularly monitor the patient's vital signs such as temperature, pulse, and blood pressure. I will assess the frequency and character of the patient's cough episodes to determine if treatment is effective or not. I will keep track of the patient's fluid intake and output to assess for signs of dehydration. Then, I will observe for any signs of complications such as high fever, which will indicate if condition is worsening. I will conduct pulse oximetry to determine levels of oxygen saturation to note if any respiratory failure is present. Then lastly, I will document and communicate observations to the healthcare team uh, for timely interventions. You can also continue with the following. I will monitor the patient's feeding pattern and encourage feeding. Remember, children lose their appetite easily when they are unwell. Then you can say, I will monitor the child's tolerance level, uh, levels for activities. That being the case, we talk about psychological care. Firstly, I will explain the condition to the patient's mother to allay anxiety because the mother is also anxious. I will explain reasons for isolation. I will explain symptoms to the mother of the patient and the current treatment. I will explain the tubings and equipment around uh, bed to allay anxiety. I will allow the patient to express concerns and ask questions to promote cooperations and allay anxiety. A three-year-old can express uh, his worries and concerns because they're able to talk. Yes, I will explain all procedures being done to the patient and the mother to promote cooperation and allay anxiety. Then we have hygiene. Under hygiene, you can explain the following things. Hand hygiene. I will wash hands frequently to prevent cross-contamination. Secondly, I will assist the patient in maintaining personal hygiene, including oral care, bathing, to prevent skin breakdown and infection. Then thirdly, I will ensure that the patient's environment is clean and free from contamination. Fourthly, I will ensure the safe uh, disposal of contaminated materials such as used tissues or soiled linens to prevent the spread of the bacteria. That being the case, we can talk about elimination. So. Um, I will closely monitor the patient's stool output, including frequency, consistency, color, and presence of blood and mucus, if present. Then, I will assist with toiletry. I will assist the patients in a timely manner when they need to open bowels by providing a bedpan. Thirdly, 
I will educate the mother of the patients on the importance of proper hand hygiene or hygiene after each bowel movement, emphasizing thorough hand washing to prevent spread of infection. Then, I will ensure safe and hygienic disposal of soiled linen or items such as bedpan or commode buckets using appropriate infection control measures to prevent contamination of the environment and the spread of the bacteria. That being explained, we now go to our nutrition. I will provide adequate feeds consisting of a well-balanced diet to promote good nutritional status. I will give meals, our feeds rich in proteins to replace worn out tissue and promote recovery. I will give the patient feeds rich in carbohydrates for energy such as rice, potatoes, juice. I will give the patient feeds rich in vitamins for maintenance of normal body metabolic processes. And lastly, I will provide a high fiber diet to prevent subsequent uh, constipation. Then you can conclude, I will provide adequate oral fluids to maintain hydration. Next on our list of headings is that of exercises. What do you explain? I will encourage the patient to rest and avoid strenuous activities uh, during the acute phase of illness to conserve energy. Yes, I will provide information on the benefits of gentle and non-strenuous activities such as walking or stretching to prevent muscle weakness and maintain mobility. And then I will assess the patient's level of fatigue and adjust activity recommendations accordingly. Uh, uh, fourthly, I will monitor vital signs of the patient's response to any physical activities ensuring that they do not exacerbate symptoms. That being said, we can now talk about medication. I will administer prescribed antibiotics such as benzyl penicillin as ordered by the healthcare provider to target the coronary bacterium infection. I will educate the patient's mother on the importance of completing the full course of antibiotics if symptoms improve to prevent antibiotic resistance. I will administer expectorant medications cautiously if, um, pre if prescribed as they may not be recommended for all cases but can sometimes worsen the infection. And then I will monitor for any adverse reactions of medication such as allergic reactions or gastrointestinal upset. Then lastly, I will encourage proper documentation of medication, administration, including dosage and timing. Lastly, our IEC, understanding diphtheria. So I will explain what diphtheria is in simple terms to the mother. It is a bacterial infection that affects the throat and can lead to severe breathing difficulties. I will mention that it is preventable through vaccination. Number two, treatment options. I will describe the treatment plan typically. Diphtheria is treated with antibiotics to kill the bacteria and sometimes antitoxins uh, is administered to neutralize the toxins produced by the bacteria. I will ensure the mother understands the importance of completing the full course of antibiotics. Thirdly, isolation and hygiene. I will emphasize the need to isolate the infected child to prevent the spread of uh, the disease. I will explain how diphtheria is contagious through respiratory droplets and stress the importance of proper hand hygiene and cough etiquette to reduce the risk of transmission. Then. You can also conclude with the following, a vaccination. I will inform the mother about the importance of routine immunization and I will ensure that the child is up to date with their vaccines, including diphtheria tetanus pertussis vaccine, which is DPT, and mention the recommended uh, vaccination schedule where to get the child vaccinated if needed. And then also, I will monitor, so monitoring and follow-up. I will explain the importance of closely monitoring the child's condition during and after treatment. I will encourage the mother to watch for signs of improvement and any potential complications such as difficulties in breathing, which is obvious in this case. And I will stress the need for follow-up appointments with the healthcare provider to ensure full recovery. Those are five points under IEC that you can include both in the nursing care and if the question was asked to describe the IEC. Then... Early detection and reporting, I will stress the need for marketeers, um, pardon me, this is a, a whole different section. Okay, a quick summary. So, the last question was, the vaccine for diphtheria were asked to outline the immunization regimen or regime for diphtheria. So, the vaccine is given from pentavalent combination. There isn't a single vaccine for diphtheria alone. So the vaccines given is a combination and it's a pentavalent combination of five vaccines. So we have, it's given at six weeks. The first dose is given at six weeks, typically given at 10 weeks. The sec, uh, oh, sorry, that was a typo there. So the first dose of uh, D DPT is given at six weeks. This should be six. And then the second dose is given at 10 weeks. And then the third dose is given at 14 weeks. That being the case, ladies and gentlemen, 
we can do a quick summary. So the question was define diphtheria. Diphtheria can be defined as an acute respiratory inflammatory condition of the larynx, pharynx, trachea, and nose caused by coronary bacteria and uh, coronary bacterium diphtheria and is characterized by barking cough, pseudo grayish membrane fever, as well as um, airway inflammation. Then we explained, we mentioned the causative organism, we explained the pathophysiology, we mentioned the five types of diphtheria, and we discussed the management in three critical headings. And we've also explained the immunization regime for diphtheria. Thank you very much for watching my video. Don't forget to like and share. And I'll be expecting comments if, you're, if you need any clarification, I'll be responding as soon as possible. Until then, see you in my next video.